Core Justice, Chapter 34. Camp Spartan, Arrington, Tennessee. The assault teams and some supporting staff met 10 minutes later at the PT field that double, doubled as an expedient landing zone. Andy and Brian were both suited up in identical black utilities. Master Sergeant Willie Trent stood nearby talking with Dr. Higgins and Marjorie Haynes. Todd Dunn was giving the assembled troops their final orders while Travis listened and chimed in periodically. Neil wandered around the pairs of assault men handing out his goodies. Each pair nodded as they were handed their gift bags. They all knew Neil well and always liked getting to try out, uh, getting to try out his array of new gadgets. These were all highly skilled operators with extensive real world experience. Warriors one and all. Cal walked around the group not really knowing where to fit in. He was a key part of the operation, but he still felt disconnected. Everyone else knew their part and none had hesitate to come to his aid. It was in that moment, as he observed the silent preparation of each man, that he finally felt at home. A feeling of peace wrapped itself like a blanket around his body and mind. The clarity of battle suddenly enveloped him. He knew what he had to do. He stepped up to the men that would put themselves in harm's way and asked for everyone's attention. I wanted to say a couple words before we step off. First, although I think I know the answer, any man that feels uncomfortable, uncomfortable with the upcoming mission and the possible repercussions can leave right now. He looked around at the gathered men and none stirred until someone chuckled. It was Travis. Then the laugh spread to the assault teams. Cal knit his eyebrows together. Did anyone ever tell you not to volunteer for anything? The snickers changed to outright guffaws as a smile spread across Cal's face. One of the men in the back row shouted, We don't have a choice, Staff Sergeant. You sign our paychecks. Cal laughed. It was good to be with his family again. Another man in the front row joined in the ribbing, pointing at Travis. Shit, I didn't volunteer. The recruiter screwed me. Cal held his hand up for sil silence. <laughs> the recruiter screwed me. Oh, we hear that a lot of the Marine Corps. Um, <clears throat> Cal held his, he his hand up for silence. As long as we understand each other, I just wanted to say thanks. I feel like I'm back with my Marines. Another voice rang out. Semper Fi, Staff Sergeant. A fourth man joined the chor chorus. Hurrah, Staff Sergeant. Followed by a din of barks and backslapping, the men li lined up to shake Cal's hand. He somehow, held in, he somehow held in his emotions of gratitude, and he looked each man in the eye as they all quickly shook his hand and boarded their respective helicopters. As the last man boarded, the pilots of each helo looked to Cal, saluted, and lifted off. Travis walked up behind Cal and put a hand on his cousin's shoulder. Well, I guess I know what your answer is. Yeah, I'm in, Cal said. New section. It would be a short 20-minute uh, car ride out to the location where West held his captives. It gave them a chance to finalize their strategy. They had devised a plan that would keep things, uh, keep would both <laughs> blah, 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 blah. sorry they had devised a plan that would both keep things simple and maximize their chances of success cal would drive master sergeant trent's truck to the rendezvous point while the others travis dunn brian neil andy and master sergeant trent would board one of the returning helos and fly to a nearby Lord loitering area it would allow them to monitor the situation and provide almost immediate support if needed Neil explained his new gadget to Cal and the others as he helped, helped him put it on. Just remember, since this is a prototype, you'll only get one shot with it. It doesn't have the ability to recharge yet. Got it, Cal said. One hell of a way to field test it. Yeah, you'll owe me a full debriefing when you get back, Neil said. Patel paused and both men knew why. The tech crew guru had suddenly realized there was a high probability that Cal would not return. No problem, said Cal. I can't wait to use it. He'd seen the change in, Cal in Neil's demeanor and wanted to diffuse the sudden tension. Patel relaxed and slapped on his quirky smile once again. You're a genius, brother. <clears throat> Trent stepped up to them. I'd really like to take a look. <sighs> I'd really like to see the look on West's face when you use it. Cal nodded. To rehash really quickly, once I get eyes on Frank and Janet... I give you guys a signal and you send the teams in. I'll take care of West. Yeah, just remember to keep your head down when our boys come crashing in, Trent warned. I told Dunn not to use flashbangs, so, so you should be good there. With any luck, those baby, baby birds will take out a few bad guys. 
Hey, Neil, you got the helo cams up yet? Neil had resumed his position in front of the numerous computer screens. Almost there, they just called in to say the insertions were successful. <clears throat> can you patch that? Uh, can you patch that through your speakers? Uh, Cal asked. Just a second. Neil played out, uh, played out a few keystrokes. Got it. The small group looked over Neil's shoulder to see the live stream from the uh, two helicopters. They'd positioned themselves at a distance and altitude that wouldn't allow their locations to be heard from the farm held by West and his crew. Spartan 6, this is Spartan Mobile 2. Travis answered, go ahead, Mobile 2. Roger, how does my video feed look over? Clear and pretty, Mobile 2. Roger, zooming in for a closer look. The group tr stood transfixed as the pilot zoomed in on the main house. It appeared to be a one-story ranch. <clears throat> it appeared to be a one-story ranch. Or it just was a one-story ranch. Uh, the infrared camera easily picked up the heat signatures in and around the house. Six, I've got what looks like 12 bodies on location. You getting this? Roger, Mobile 2, Travis said. Can you really get in there uh, with the zoom and pan around the house over? <clears throat> The pilot did as instructed and panned from room to room. There were six people in the house itself. Four were in what looked to, looked to be a back bedroom or master suite. Zoom in more on that back room, Mobile 2. Roger. The screen enlarged and the team could see the white outlines of two people sitting on the ground, another two pacing around the room. That's got to be them, uh, Cal said. Travis nodded. Mobile 2, can you give us a better look at the perimeter? Roger. The video slowly zoomed out and panned around the property. Six, I've got what looks like four teams of two patrolling the perimeter over. Silence reigned as the team continued to follow the moving video. Each man was analyzing the battlefield in a different light. They could already make out the patrol patterns. Are we patching this to the assault teams? Travis asked. Neil nodded. I gave them some tablets that have the video streaming live. Each two-man team has one. Good. I want to make sure we're seeing... Uh, all, we're all seeing the same things. They, conti they continued to watch the live feed, knowing that the landscape they now observed would soon be underfoot. New section. The fourth patrol had just checked in. Nothing but a bunch of deer and turkey. His boys weren't use, uh, used to farm landscape, but none had complained. They knew better than to gripe now. West walked, West, uh, walked to the master bedroom and addressed the captive couple. You have about another hour until your hero gets here. Don't go thinking you're going to try anything. Both of my boys here have orders to shoot you if you run. Don't worry, though. I told him only to shoot you in the legs. It'll hurt like hell, but it's better than being dead. The bound pair said nothing for fear of more beatings. They'd already silently agreed to wait until Cal showed up. They believed in Cal's ability, and more importantly, Frank secretly hoped SSI would be involved. New section. Uh, one quick note. I don't put multiple points of view in the same chapter anymore. I'd rather just chop it up, chop it up so you're, it's not confusing. Just a, you know, a little note as I'm reading along here. New section. You ready, Cal? Trent asked. Yeah. Thanks again for loaning me your truck. Trent grinned. No problem. I know if anything happens to it, you'll buy me something better. You bet. Cal came over to join them, or Travis came over to join them. He had the look of a brotherly worry already etched on his face. Are you ready? Geez, how many dads do I have around here? I'm fine, Trav. Travis shrugged, but he didn't look sorry. Had to ask. I know, Cal said. Anything else you need? How, how about you have a nice glass of the famous grouse waiting for me when we get done? You got it. But really, Cal, are you sure you're ready for this? You did just get shot like two weeks ago. I'm still a little sore and weak, but I'm not planning on doing any of the heavy lifting. I'll let the assault teams take on the bad guys, Cal said. Good. Like we talked about, keep your head down and our boys will take care of the rest. Travis patted him on the back. Cal nodded and jumped in the truck. He had to adjust the front seat to accommodate his smaller frame. Starting the engine, he looked back at his friends gathered next to the truck. All right, boys, I'll see you on the other side. He closed the door and didn't look back. Pressing on the gas, he wondered if this would be the last time he'd see them. New section. Dante played the scenario out in his head. He knew that the Stokes kid would probably try something. Hell, he'd try some little trick, too, if he was in the same boat. It didn't matter, though. The plan he had, he had concocted couldn't even be foiled by an FBI raid. Revenge was fast approaching. All right, so um, there we have Cal and the boys getting ready to go. 
Um, I, I don't know about you. I, I kind of got shivers a little bit when he was addressing the the assault teams and, um, you know, getting ready to go before the helos arrived or the helos took off. Um, you know, for, for a lot of military guys, it's hard getting out because you no longer know where you belong. And uh, part of the reasons I actually wrote this book was because I didn't know where I belonged at the time. And, and so I threw that into Cal. Cal and his personality is a lot like me. It's especially who I used to be. Uh, you know, probably probably a little shorter fuse, a little quicker to, to take action. But, uh, but, you know, this chapter shows us that I think he's found his place in the world. So let's move on to the next one.